Hello, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Hello, Miguel. Hello, Melody, David, Andrea. How are you guys? Are you having a good day? Yes. Yes, I had a good day. I'm very tired. Ah, uh, I understand. Okay. So today is Wednesday, the middle of the week, right? Uh, so you're closer to your weekend. That's a good thing. All right. All right, very good. So let me ask you, when do you guys plan to take this test? What is your, uh, what is your plans? When do you plan to take the TOEFL test? Maybe let's say today is February. Will you take it in March? Will you take it in April? Are you going to take it in May? When do you plan on, on taking the test? As soon as possible. As soon as possible, okay. Yeah. All right, very good. Do you guys know where you're going to take it? Are you going to take it with Inglés Corporativo? Are you going to take it with uh, another academy or online? Are you going to take it in your university? So where are you going to take the test? I'm not sure right now. Okay. Okay, do you know where you can do it? Do you have different options? No, I was planning to just seeking on the internet and Okay. And see what my options are. Okay, very good. So try try to look up, uh, if you want, you can ask Inglés Corporativo, someone in admin there in the group, what's up? You can write them and see if, uh, if they have the test or if they know somewhere that they can refer you to. Okay. All right, very good. So today uh, we're working on the listening section. Uh, we have been learning different strategies, right? What are some of the strategies that you guys learned for the listening section? What are some tools that you can use? Taking notes. Taking notes, yeah, that's very important. Very important uh, skill to have. Definitely, definitely. Today we're going to take a, do another practice test and, and I hope that you guys can practice that more. Uh, what else? Uh, other skills that you have learned? Other type of skills? What else? Other type of skills that you guys have learned for the listening section? Kind of questions. The type of questions, right? Yeah, type of questions, yeah. Okay. Learning the, the different type of questions, okay? All right. What else? Uh, what about you, Miguel? What other uh, skills that, that you've learned from the from the listening practice that we've been doing? Um, well, honestly, I have bad memory to remember their names, but when it comes to practicing them, I actually think I can do it. What, what, what is that? Hey, the... I have bad, bad memory for names, so I can't remember <laughs> okay. the name of the techniques okay all right very good but uh, that's the important thing right that you learn some techniques here right so we learned how to take notes and we saw that we have different type of uh, uh, ways that you can take notes we learn different type of questions right como dijo wilfredo different type of questions we have uh, content question main ideas questions uh detailed questions we're going to learn that today yesterday what did we learn What did we learn yesterday, remember? Okay, remember the word gist. Remember gist? So we had gist content. Gist content. And, and, and gist, uh, uh, gist uh, purpose. Purpose, very good, very good. Yes. Wilfredo and Veronica, very good. Yeah. So what is the difference? Just content and just purpose. What is the difference? 
this this content is the main idea and mm -hmm. and the purpose is what or why this you know is the uh, content about perfect perfect yeah there you go there you go excellent all right so let's go ahead and uh let me let me share with you we'll look at some of the things that we have uh so we'll look at today at detailed questions another type of questions that, that you can uh that you can also uh you're going to see in the test right so detailed questions are very simple uh, basically they answered questions like who what when where how también, right they're going to answer wh words okay those are detailed questions what is the difference between uh main idea and details main idea versus details what is that difference details is the difference is that the main idea is what we're going to we're going to see in the details you know correct and make it clear yeah doesn't it yeah so the the main idea is what the 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 conversation is about topic of the conversation and details is going to be specific information right like uh who what when where Sometimes it can be information like uh, a name, uh, uh, the name of something, the date, a number, time, okay? Those can be details, okay? So let's look at some of these questions here that we have. This is, uh, what the, uh, this is from the, the, one of the tests that we're going to practice today. Uh, look at question number 12. What is the talk mainly about? What type of question is that? Number 12. Pragmatic. Uh, which one? Or just. Just. Uh, just content. content. Mm -hmm. You can say just content, right? Si no se acuerdan la palabra just contents, just main idea. Main idea, right? So this is the main the idea. Same, right? Yes. Uh huh. Just content is almost the same as the main idea. Okay. Okay. All right, very good. Number uh, 13, what type of question in this? In the lecture, the professor describes the process of oxygen formation in the Earth's atmosphere. Put the following events in order. Drag each sentence to the space where it belongs, right? So this one, uh, this is going to be an order question. A just purpose question. Yeah, it can be a just purpose question, okay? So this is gonna be your order oh, information. Okay, detail questions. Mm -hmm. So this one is gonna ask you to put the information in order, right? All right. Uh, number 14, no, me, no la pude recortar. Number 15, where, where did the majority of the oxygen on our planet originate? What type of question can this be? Detail question. Yeah, it can be a detailed question, right? We're asking for a place or a location, right? Where? Okay. Very good. Number uh, 16, it says, listen again in part of the lecture. All right, so for 16, they're going to play another audio, right? Van a, van a, van a escuchar una porción de lo que se habló, lo mismo, right? Pero solo una porción. What does the student imply when she says this? Blah blah blah, right? You van a escuchar ustedes lo que dice otra vez. So, what does this imply? What's another word for imply? Infer. Infer question. Yeah. Or what she means about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. What does the person mean, right? What is the, yeah, the right. Mm -hmm. right? What is the attitude of the person? What is the person trying to transmit, right? Excellent. Good job. Okay. So the good thing is that you guys are seeing the different type of questions, right? Why is that important? Well, I think it's important so that you guys are not afraid, right? No estén en shock o no estén como, ¿qué tipo de preguntas? Oh my God, you know? No, I, I, yes, eh, you know, I've already seen these type of questions, right? I've seen them in different practices. I, 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 I know what they're looking for, et cetera, right? All right, good job, good job. Okay, so we're going to look at detailed questions, right? 
And detailed questions, again, answer uh, who, what, when, where, how, uh, information like that. Phrases commonly used in detailed questions for the questions, right? According to the speaker, blank. According to the speaker, the professor. This occurred because, okay? So according to the speaker, this occurred because, right? So this can be a cause and effect question, right? Right? And this is an opinion, right? According to the speaker, right? Uh, the next uh, example is says, according to the speaker, why does he or she say this? Right? Estamos como viendo diferentes tipos de preguntas, like different type of phrases that you're going to see in the questions. Another example is the speaker's description of, and then the question continues. What does the speaker imply when he or she says, blah, blah, blah? Why does the woman mention, blah, blah, blah? Okay. So these are type of phrases, right? Why am I showing you this? Para que ustedes ya puedan reconocer esto, right? Oh, this is an implied question. Oh, this is a, this is a detailed question, okay? Para que ustedes ya estén como, ah, familiarizados con ese tipo de frase, like, ah, yeah, I, I know what it means, right? Y no estar ahí como gastando 20 segundos tratando de entender esa porción de la pregunta. Okay, so that's going to help you, right? Again, let's repeat the phrases. According to the speaker, this occurred because, according to the speaker, why does he or she say, the speaker description of, what does the speaker imply when he or she says, why does the woman mention, blah, blah, blah. Okay. All right, so. Prepare, right? Because this is the type of questions you're going to see. All right, questions? Do you guys have any questions? Okay, now this is another way of looking at it, right? This is, I, li I like to show this so you guys can have a visual, right? Look, usually a, a lecture, for example, right? Escuchamos uh, uh, those lectures ayer. Um, son bastante lar larga, verdad? Son como cinco minutos, right? Speaking right? Kind of long. But it's going to be uh, an order. There's going to be a logic behind it, right? So the first thing you're going to see, right, is the main idea, right? No nos vamos a salir de aquí. Eh, eh, lo que ustedes van a escuchar no se va a salir de aquí, okay? For example, remember that yesterday we heard one conversation that they were talking about uh, eh, creo que la solar system. El sistema solar, algo así, right? Remember? They were speaking about that. Siempre se van a mantener dentro de ese tema, right? La palma de la mano es el tema, right? So no se va a salir de ahí, okay? It's the main idea, right? Es decir, no van a empezar a, es hablando de solar system y terminando hablando de política, right? No, no, va, no va a pasar así, okay? Uh, for example, they're not going to talk about uh, um, traveling and then finish speaking about economics. You know, it's not going to, it's not re really going to happen. Okay. So they're going to stay mainly within the, 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 the main idea, right? Now, after the main idea, right? Usually at the beginning of the, of the conversation, there's a topic sentence. Okay. After the topic sentence, you're going to have details inside the lecture, right? The details can answer questions, for example, what, when, okay, where, how, why, et cetera, right? So usually this is going to be like a, like a flow of a lecture. Um, also, this here is going to help you for the writing section, right? No sé si, si le va a tocar hacer una sección de writing, el TOEFL IPT, 
eh, del, el, el más completo, el que estamos eh, practicando, sí tiene la sección de writing, right? ¿Se acuerdan? Tiene que hacer dos writing essays. Okay, so a good way to do an essay, which uh, an essay is five paragraphs, this is a good way to do it here. You start off with your main idea, you develop a, a topic sentence, so ahí tienen un paragraph, and then you do paragraph number two, number three, number four, and number five, okay? So esta es otra herramienta que también les puede ayudar para writing, okay? Pero adaptémoslo a listening ahorita. Main idea is going to be the main topic. Then you're going to have an introduction or a topic sentence. The introduction can be a, a, a paragraph long, or it can be maybe 20, 30 seconds of the, of the lecture. Then you're going to go into details, right? For example, se acuerdan ayer que vimos, eh, hicimos un ejercicio, right? Están hablando del sister theory, se acuerdan? The sister theory, de donde viene la luna, right? Uh, había otra theory que se llamaba the, the moon theory. I don't remember, <laughs> right? Right? Pero cada uno es como un detalle, right? Dentro de la lecture. Okay. So this is another, another way of looking at it, right? This can help you, right? Eh, ustedes van a también estar tomando notas, right? So maybe you can do something like this when you take notes. Okay. All right. Very good. Questions? Okay. Uh, let's talk about traps to avoid, right? Trampas que nos pueden poner en el examen. So be careful, right? This is like uh, para engancharte. In English, we say a curveball, right? They could throw you a curveball. Uh, some answers will have keywords that you heard in the passage, but are not the correct answer, okay? For example, some, some answers that you have there are going to have the keywords that you listen to. For example, let's say my lecture was about, was about America, okay? If you look here in question number 23 that I have here, the example question, if you see here, I have America here, America here. Casi todas tienen America, right? Pero no significa de que todas están correctas. Solo hay una correcta, right? So be careful, right? For example, si tú escuchaste America, ah, eh, hey, dice America, me voy por ahí. No, be careful, right? Some answers will have keywords that you heard in the passage, but are not the correct answer. Also, some answers will include similar words. Similar words. All right, be careful with that. Okay. Very good. So be careful with this trap. Eh, preguntas, questions for this? Okay. Let's go to the next one, trap number two. This is another trap that, that you're going to see. Avoid selecting answers that have a lot of keywords that you heard in the audio, but are not the correct answer because their meaning is not correct, all right? Let's say, for example, why does the professor say that it's better safe than sorry, right? Digamos que Escucharon eso en la lecture, right? Estoy poniendo aquí un ejemplo. In the lecture, you heard the professor say, it's better safe than sorry. Now, you heard that, right? Of course, it was within a context, right? Y en un contexto, ustedes lo escucharon en el audio. But look at, the, look at the different options that I have. Suena bastante similar, pero no son. Why did the professor say that it's better safe than sorry? A. Because he is better than the other students? B, because the other students are better than him? ¿Vieron ahí lo que hicieron en esa opción? Simplemente le dieron vuelta a la pregunta, a la respuesta, perdón, a la opción. A, because he is better than the other students? Or B, because the other students are better than him? Simplemente está invertida, ¿verdad? Yeah. <laughs> pero pero no, tiene, no tiene el significado. Right? No tiene el mismo significado. And be careful, right? Because 
uh, they have key words, right? They have important words, right? For example, better. And then I, here I have better, <laughs> right? I, here I have better too, right? So, tiene la palabra, algunas de las palabras de la frase, pero no están correctas, okay? También el significado está invertido, right? So, be careful with that. Uh, or C, because it is better to be prepared. Or D, because if you are prepared, you will be sorry. Right? So, the, uh, right there, la frase, it's better safe than sorry, means it's better to be prepared. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the correct answer will probably be C. Okay. Now, I give you this example so that you can see, right? Uh, some answers will have the meaning switched, inverted. Yes. Invertido, right? So you have to be careful and read. Okay. Remember, you heard the phrase and it's within the context, right? In un context, contexto, right? So you have to pay attention to that context, right? Sometimes the content has to do with the attitude. What is the attitude of the speaker, right? What is the tone of the speaker? What is the, the reason? El por qué? Why does he say that, you know? So you have to pay attention to that. Okay, questions? All right, so be careful with this. Este puede ser otro tipo de trampa. Okay, uh, let me play this section here. It's going to explain a little more about detailed questions, okay? So play the audio. Hi, I'm Michael from ETS. Today on Inside the TOEFL Test, we're going inside the TOEFL IBT listening section, specifically the detailed questions. Detailed questions are probably the most straightforward of all the listening question types. They will ask you to remember specific facts about the lecture or conversation. You can recognize detailed questions because they include phrases like according to and what is in the question. Detailed questions will always ask about an important conceptual detail. You will not be expected to memorize trivial details, such as whether something happened in 1977 or 1978. The answer to a detailed question will always be explicitly stated in the listening conversation or lecture. Now let's look at a sample detail question. First, here's an excerpt from a conversation between a coach and a student who are catching up on what happened while the student was away. Okay, uh, I guess I'll see you this afternoon at practice then. Just a minute. There are a couple of other things I need to tell you. Oh, okay. Uh, first, everybody's getting a new team jacket. Wow, how'd that happen? Uh, a woman who played here about 20, 25 years ago came through town a few weeks ago and saw a game and said she wanted to do something for the team, so... So she's buying us new jackets? Yep. Wow, that's really nice of her. An example of a detailed question is, who is buying new jackets for the team? Again, a detailed question will always be a fact that is directly stated in the listening passage. The coach explicitly tells the woman that a former player is the one who is buying the team new jackets which makes option C the correct answer. Here's a tip to help you practice recognizing important details in a conversation or lecture. Find a friend or study partner and listen to a short audio clip. When it's finished, each of you write down as much as you can remember. Then compare notes to see who remembered more of the important points and supporting details. There are lots of ways to improve your English skills. Whatever you do, keep practicing. And good luck on your TOEFL test. Okay, very good, very good. So you guys saw, right? Detailed questions give a specific detail, a specific fact. Usually a name of a person, a time, a date, something like that. All right. Wait. Hi, I'm Michael from ETS. 
Okay. So let's see uh, different note taking strategies that we saw, right? Eh, vimos diferentes formas de tomar notas, right? Uh, for example, you can do the something like this, right? Yo les he dado de, como diferentes ideas, but ustedes toman whatever works for you, right? You can, for example, put here uh, just content and you can put just purpose questions. Purpose, like that. So you can do something like this, right? This is not nothing special. Or maybe you can do something like this, right? Have a square, have a different, uh, different options here, right? Details, you can do something like that, right? If you have a conversation with two people, maybe you can do something like this. And okay, aquí voy a tener speaker number one, speaker number two, right? Speaker number one is uh, in the, in the video that you saw, right? Speaker number one was the coach and speaker number two was the student or the player, right? So maybe you can do something like that, okay? Claro, hay información que queda en medio, right? Que it's just general information. Okay, so the good, the thing is that you take notes, right? However you want, take notes. Uh, si no pueden hacer la, la mano, se acuerdan que vimos la, the little hand, right? Uh, something like this, right? I'm not very good at drawing, but you can do the hand, right? Do something like that, right? La, la idea es que lo, que lo que lo que a ti te ayude, okay? But you have to take notes, okay? Now, my recommendation, right? No escriban como detalles largos. Don't write like long sentences. Like for example, the the coach said that and old player is is going to buy jackets for the team no escriban todo eso right right don't write all that aunque es verdad right you heard it on the video right el ejemplo que dieron en el video anterior but my recommendation is just write uh buying new jackets it. Right? Uh, okay, or former player. That's it. Escriban así lo más corto que puedan, right? Former player jackets. Yeah, finish. Okay. Eso es mucho mejor que escribir todo, ¿verdad? This is fast. So that you can, you can continue listening, right? Now, esto te va a tomar mucho tiempo, solo vas a escribir una cosa. All right. Um, also, remember something that we heard, right? In the beginning, after the audio, right? Ya escuchaste el audio, right? At the beginning, right? Question number one. Question number one, right? Va a ser que? A just content question or a just purpose question? but never both, okay? Never both. Es decir, escucho un audio, después siempre, la primera pregunta va a ser main idea or a detailed question, okay? All right. Do you guys have any questions? Do you guys have any questions? No? No. Mm -hmm. All right, are you ready for a practice test? Ready? I think so. I think so. Come on, <laughs> you can do it. Come on, with confidence, right? Because attitude is everything. You can do it. So you can do it, right? All right, so trata de practicar, but I know you can do it. All right, I'm going to share with you the audio. All right, so. Escriban allí sus respuestas. Pueden eh, pongan del 1 al. Ya les digo cuántas preguntas tienen. Thirty-four. Uh -huh. Thirty-four. 
the only thing is okay wait a bit hold on hold on okay i have the answers ya encontré la respuesta all right so i have the answers to the listening section okay uh let me share with you my computer let me see if i can share mm -hmm. all right all done Okay, this is the test, right? So I'm going to play the test from the beginning and then I will send you the answers uh, in WhatsApp or maybe I'll show you the answers there. All right, so this test will take maybe about 30 minutes. Pueden escuchar, sí? Yes. All right, perfect. So, uh, En este, en este practice test, la persona va a leer la pregunta y eso va a ir marcando el tiempo, ¿ok? So yo no voy a hablar, yo voy a estar acá, pero va a ser la, la persona que ahí que está dando el test. Listen to part of a conversation between a student and a professor. Excuse me, are you very busy right now? Not at all. Come on in. I wanted to talk to you about my paper. I have a big problem. Oh, really? The paper that's due tomorrow? I suppose you're looking for an extension? Uh, well... Look, I know you're probably very busy, and maybe you've got two other papers due on the same day, or maybe you have three midterms. I've heard it all before, okay? The fact is, you've known about this paper for six weeks. If you left everything until the last minute, you're just going to have to live with the consequences. I take off two points per day. I didn't leave anything to the last minute. My paper was finished and it was saved on my laptop. Last weekend, my roommate had a party and somebody stole my laptop. I can tell you all about the paper. I'm just going to need some time to write it up again. Oh, uh, I see. Well, that's very unfortunate. You should always keep an extra copy of everything that you have on your computer. Yeah, I know. Did you, uh, report it to the police? Yes, I have the police report right here, if you don't believe me. Oh, that won't be necessary. Why don't you just tell me a little bit about your paper? Sure, no problem. What I did was I basically outlined the history of psychology going back to the uh, Middle Ages. I tried to show how society's definition of what is normal or abnormal has changed drastically over time. It's, uh, it's also different in different cultures. Then I showed how abnormal behavior gets defined as mental illness. Now, I think the problem with that is that something that was considered abnormal 30 years ago might be considered perfectly normal today. Yes, I think I can think of a few good examples. Oh, yeah, there are tons. So now we look back and say, no, those people were not mentally ill. Well, are we making the same mistakes today? So, what I was trying to say in the paper is that uh, the way that we study and treat mental illness is problematic. How so? Well, we treat mental illness like it's a disease. However, we are talking about behaviors. And if one behavior is abnormal in one culture but perfectly normal in another, how can we call it a disease? That sounds like a very interesting paper. I look forward to reading it. Do you think you can get it to me in a week? A week? That shouldn't be any trouble at all. Thank you so much. Not to worry. Sorry, I was so, uh, so hard on you when you first came in. I should have listened to what you had to say before I jumped to any conclusions. I understand. You probably have students asking you for extensions all the time. Yes, it gets a little trying. It seems like no matter how much notice I give to students, there are always a handful that come in the day before the paper is due, looking for an extension. Well, thank you for being so understanding. I'll get the paper to you within a week. I look forward to it. And good luck getting your computer back. Thanks. 
Now get ready to answer the questions. You may use your notes to help you answer. Number 1. Why does the woman go to see her professor? Number 2. What is the woman's problem with her paper? Yes. Number three, what was the woman's paper about? Listen again to part of the conversation, then answer the question. Oh, really? The paper that's due tomorrow? I suppose you're looking for an extension? Uh, well... Look... I know you're probably very busy, and maybe you've got two other papers due on the same day, or maybe you have three midterms. I've heard it all before, okay? Number four. What can be inferred about the professor? Listen again to part of the conversation, then answer the question. Yes, I have the police report right here, if you don't believe me. Oh, that won't be necessary. Why don't you just tell me a little bit about your paper? Number five. Why does the professor say this? Oh, that won't be necessary. Why don't you just tell me a little bit about your paper? Listen to part of a lecture in an anatomy class. You know how turkey has white meat and dark meat? Well, so do people. OK, we don't call it meat when we're talking about people. We call it muscle. But that's exactly what you're eating when you eat turkey, the muscle. Personally, I like the dark meat, that is, the red muscle, that, as I'm sure you know, comes from the legs. The white meat, or muscle, on the other hand, comes from the breast and wings, OK, so that's how the muscle types are distributed in turkeys. Eagles now are the opposite. Their chest and wing muscles are red, and their leg muscles are white. Not that I've ever eaten eagle. Anyway, what can we conclude from that difference in the colour of these birds' muscles? Think about the lifestyles of the turkey and of the eagle. Think about what they use their muscles for. OK, for one thing, the turkey doesn't fly much. When it does fly, it's in short bursts, like maybe to escape a predator. And it's got white muscle in the breasts and wings. On the other hand, it walks and runs around a lot, and it's got red muscles in the legs. The eagle, conversely, flies a lot and only walks in short bursts. And again, it has dark meat in the chest and white meat in the legs. That tells us something about the use of different kinds of muscles for different kinds of activities. Now, here's the science of it. OK, so we know that white muscle is good for short bursts of energy, like when the turkey has a short stint at flight, and we know that red muscle is good for sustained use, like when an eagle goes soaring over the sea in search of prey. Now, let's look at the composition of the different types of muscle and see why they are so well suited to their purposes. First of all, muscles need oxygen to work, and muscles that are constantly in use need more oxygen. For this reason, these muscles have something called myoglobin. Myoglobin is a kind of protein molecule that stores oxygen. Muscles that are used continuously for standing and walking around have a lot of myoglobin. Incidentally, it's the myoglobin that gives it its dark colour. And, as you might guess, the white muscle does not have myoglobin. These muscles are used briefly, and then the animal gets tired out. That's because it doesn't have a steady supply of oxygen going to these muscles. So you might be wondering where the red and white muscles are in humans. Basically, most people have about 50% white muscle and 50% red muscle, and it's all interspersed throughout the body. That makes sense when you think about human behaviour. Most of the muscles that we use for short bursts of energy are the same as the ones we use constantly. Take our legs. We use them to stand and walk. These are slow, continuous movements, so we would expect to have red muscle there. 
On the other hand, we also use them to sprint, so we need to have white muscle in there as well. Hmm. Speaking of sprinting, notice how I said most people have a 50-50 ratio of red muscle to white muscle. There's actually a lot of variation between people. Now, knowing what you know about white muscle and red muscle, what would you expect to find if you looked at the muscles of different types of runners? Would a sprinter's muscles be different from a long-distance runner's muscles? Yes, indeed. It turns out that sprinters tend to have more white muscle than red muscle. Conversely, long-distance runners tend to have more red muscle than white muscle. Now, it's possible to change your ratio of red to white muscle through athletic training. It's possible to change it a little, but you really can't alter it that much. Scientists currently believe. That there's a genetic component involved. Now get ready to answer the questions. You may use your notes to help you answer. Number six, what is the talk mainly about? Number seven, how does the professor introduce the two different types of muscles? Number eight, which of the following is not mentioned as a difference between white muscles and red muscles? Number nine, according to the professor, how are turkey and eagle muscles different? Listen again to part of the lecture, then answer the question. Hmm. Speaking of sprinting, notice how I said most people have a fifty-fifty ratio of red muscle to white muscle. There's actually a lot of variation between people. Now, knowing what you know about white muscle and red muscle, what would you expect to find if you looked at the muscles of different types of runners? Number ten. Why does the professor say this? Hmm. Speaking of sprinting, notice how I said most people have a fifty-fifty ratio of red muscle to white muscle. There's actually a lot of variation between people. Number eleven. What does the professor imply when he says this? Now it's possible to change your ratio of red to white muscle through athletic training. It's possible to change it a little, but you really can't alter it that much. Scientists currently believe that there's a genetic component involved. Listen to part of a talk in a music appreciation class. Okay, so that was a piece called "Maple Leaf Rag" by Scott Joplin. It's easily identifiable as ragtime music. Now, before we discuss the piece, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the history of ragtime music. Okay, it was sort of a precursor to jazz music, and it became popular in the late 19th century and the early 20th century. Like jazz, it originated with West African musical traditions. See, unlike European American music, African American music tended to use complex rhythms, and it's noted for exploring different kinds of rhythms. So, ragtime was invented in African American communities, and it was particularly influenced by the experiences of African slaves. Now, as you know, even after slaves in America were emancipated, there weren't a lot of opportunities for African Americans to make a decent living. Most had to settle for menial labor. However, employment as a musician was a somewhat viable opportunity for African Americans,、um, because in spite of the country's racist attitudes, black musicians contributed in a huge way to American popular music. Okay, so let's define ragtime, shall we? What did you notice about the piece? The big thing was the syncopated rhythm. While the left hand was playing a pretty steady bass line, the right hand was kind of all over the place.
That's actually where some people think ragtime gets its name. It's from the syncopated or sort of ragged rhythm. To syncopate the rhythm is to change a beat that would normally be expected to be unstressed and change it to a, a stressed or accented beat. Want an example? Think of it like this. Say you have four beats in a measure of music. Now, a lot of times the rhythm goes like this. Beat, 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 beat. The stressed beats are the odd-numbered beats. One, two, three, four. If you take that measure of music and stress the the back beats, I mean those even-numbered beats, um, that's a form of syncopation. Like this. Beat, 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 beat. Get it? There are other forms of syncopation, but that's not really the focus of the lecture today, okay? So what musicians are doing when they're syncopating music is uh, they're changing the emphasis on certain beats. That's really the defining feature of ragtime music. Now, as I said, ragtime is not jazz, but it was a precursor to the style. Is there anything about the music that you find similar or dissimilar to jazz? Well, the syncopated rhythm is used a lot in jazz. I guess it's like when ragtime musicians would rag a piece. They take a piece of music and give it a syncopated rhythm, which made it a little more uh, jazzy. So that's obviously a similarity between ragtime and jazz. I guess that's related to what you were saying about the complex rhythms in African music. That's right. The syncopated rhythm was an important contribution to jazz music. What did you notice that was different from jazz? It was pretty clear that this song wasn't improvised, am I right? Whoever was playing that piece was reading it from sheet music? That's right. Before jazz, um, Western music was normally composed and replayed exactly as it was originally composed. So yes, that's one way that ragtime differed from jazz. Jazz basically took ragtime and started improvising and got rid of the rigid formula. What else? Well, maple leaf rag was just a piano. When I think of jazz, I picture a lot of different instruments. I think with jazz, you usually get bands. Right. Ragtime was typically performed on piano, solo, though there were bands who played it as well. Now, as you might guess, there were different types of ragtime pieces. Let's listen to a couple of other styles of ragtime music. Now get ready to answer the questions. You may use your notes to help you answer. Number 12. What is the talk mainly about? Number 13. How does the professor explain syncopation? Number 14. Indicate whether each of the following describes ragtime, jazz, or both. Click in the correct box for each phrase. Number 15. According to the professor, how did ragtime music differ from jazz music? Listen again to part of the lecture, then answer the question. That's actually where some people think ragtime gets its name. It's from the syncopated or sort of ragged rhythm. Number 16. Why does the professor say this? Or sort of ragged rhythm. Listen again to part of the lecture, then answer the question. Get it? There are other forms of syncopation, but that's not really the focus of the lecture today, okay? Number 17. What can be inferred about the professor? Listen to part of a conversation between two students. Hey, Jula, are you going to the student care? Okay, guys, uh, we're going to go ahead and stop here so that we can check the answers and we have enough time, okay?
All right, so yeah, I think we did three, right? Three sections. All right, let me... Uh... Let me post the answers here. Let me see if I can post the answers. Okay. Hey. En este video no estaban así al final, sino que estaban en el, la descripción del video en YouTube. But I have it here. Okay, this is the answers. Uh, go ahead and check. Lo voy a hacer más grande. Check your answers. Okay, very good. All right, um, we have five minutes. Eh, ¿Quieren que regrese a ver las preguntas? Like, show you the questions. Let me, let me go back. Yes. Okay, let me see. All right, so... This is question number one. Pueden ver las preguntas? No. Okay. So we're done. No. Okay, there you go. Pueden revisar las que tienen mal, you know, just to, to see, just to check. Okay, let's check the, the next section. Question six through 11. Okay, and now let's check the other section. For conversation number three about the music.
Okay. Very good. So, como le fue? How did you do on the test? How did you do? Wrong. I got only seven teacher. Correct? From 17. Okay. Seven out of seven out of 17. Mm -hmm. I have seven right. Okay. What about you, Miguel? One wrong and one that I failed to write in time. Okay, okay. Uh, Veronica, how did you do? Uh, well, I just got um, five wrong. Okay. Melody, how did you do? I got three wrong, but I, I haven't finished. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alejandra, how did you do? I got five wrong, but okay. it was just the last part that we, it was difficult because mm -hmm. of the vocabulary. The, the music part, the music lesson. Yeah, yeah the music. That's difficult okay. to understand. <laughs> okay, very good. Yeah, that one that one was pretty difficult because I, a lot of us don't don't know anything about music. Uh, it's but got five, we, right? Okay. It's got five. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Very good. So let's see what can we work on, right? So there's different things that we can do. The first thing is notes. Notes. How are you doing with notes? Okay. Uh, how are you doing it with notes? Like, do you have a structure? Tienen algún algún patrón que están siguiendo? Alguna estructura de notes? Okay. Or simplemente empiezan así de una hoja en blanco. Ah, voy a empezar a escribir lo que venga. Right. Um, so, traten de hacer tal vez así como alguna división, uh, usar algún patrón, algún formato. Yeah, I, I, in my, my side case, edge. Carlos, in my case, uh -huh. I get some notes, but I feel that the questions were very fast. You know, it didn't <laughs> give me a chance to go yes. back to my notes. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel it's ah, very okay. fast. So, therefore, I, I got, you know, but okay. anyway, so I understand. I try to on my side. I try to do a flow chart for the mm -hmm. context of the conversations or mm -hmm. the lessons. But I, I have the same issue that mm -hmm. there's not enough time to check the notes. <laughs> no, so so you got you got así como dice Miguel a flow chart. That's good, right? So you got the flow chart, right? Uh, why don't you do something like? Um, uh, take like the, the, like the, the most important things, right? Every time that they change from one idea to the next idea, okay? And you can write that down, okay? Or maybe you can do, um, uh, hacer un, un little cluster. Cluster era la, la burbujita con las diferentes nubes. Maybe you can try that, okay? You have to try something that, that works for you, right? Um, and, and be able to divide. If you look at the questions, if you look at, let's go back to the questions. Solo nos quedan dos minutos, but let's go back to, to the questions, right? For example, uh, this is the one about the music. Yeah, let me see. Uh-huh, yeah, this is the one about the music, right? So number 12, main idea, main idea. A, the effect of an end of slavery on the American music. Or B, how ragtime music improve upon jazz styles by creating a formula. The characteristic of ragtime music and how it influenced jazz music. What I said, how ragtime was not taken seriously at the art as an art until it became jazz music. Okay. So alguna que se contradicen, but esta A definitely that's not the point, right? Um, so find out which ones contradict themselves. Okay, so maybe this one and this one contradict themselves. Do you see if you read the characteristic of ragtime music and how it influenced jazz? How ragtime music was not taken seriously as an art. Okay, so these two contradict themselves. Esta dos se contradicen, right? So you have to eliminate, 
Traten de eliminar lo más pronto posible, right? Eliminate. Eliminate. Me quedo con dos. You know, something like that. You have to try to, to use a process like that. Yeah, okay. but this practice is very fast in doing that, you know. I <laughs> got to retain all that I hear, and then I, I didn't have time for the notes. Okay. So you didn't have <laughs> time to for, for notes, right? No. Entonces entraste a las preguntas sin notas. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, I got my notes, but I didn't uh -huh. have time to go and review my notes, you know? Uh, okay. So I just went to answer like, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. Very good. So I mean, you have to do something that works for you, right? As far as the notes. Um, the notes, I mean, lastima que no puedo ver tus notes, verdad, Wilfredo? Pero um, remember, short, concise, organized, right? Si están escribiendo así bastantes oraciones, it's going to be difficult to go back and find the information. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, very good. So, for example, si tomaron una, algún tipo de nota sobre la palabra o la, el concepto de syncope, syncopation, mm -hmm. right? That's going to be question number 13. Okay. All right, very good. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Is on demand the available time for uh, for 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 for? I'm sorry, I'm very exhausted. <laughs> time limit. Yes, a, time limit. Is there a time limit? Yes, there's a time limit. See, I, there's for a time each limit. question or. For the the entire group of questions, uh, for the no for the for the whole test. But the thing is that, um, you know, por lo que yo entiendo, eh, you can click forward. You can click forward, right? Pero tener cierto cierto tiempo para terminar el examen. For example, sixty minutes. Let's say for example, right? So, like a twelve. Seconds, 12 mm -hmm. seconds for each question. Well, in my case, mm -hmm. I have 12 seconds for each question mm -hmm. that I need mm -hmm. to answer. Mm -hmm. When you did the, when you did test? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, there are, uh, I have 35 minutes, mm -hmm. but uh, I have a 12 seconds for each question. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yes, so, so yes, there is a time limit. There is yeah, a time. But that's very fast. Huh? <laughs> 12, so, minutes, 12 seconds for a quiz, man. That's yeah. take us long. <laughs> yeah, you but, uh, take advantage of uh -huh. the easier ones. So you you can use additional time on mm -hmm. the the all the, mm -hmm. the, the hardest. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, listen, I have to go because I have another class. But let's talk about this tomorrow, okay? Let's come up with strategies, right? Eso se trata. Strategies that work for me to be able to take better notes, to, right? This is, de eso se trata, right? All right, all right. See all right. you tomorrow then. I'll see you tomorrow then, okay? Practice on Thank YouTube. You. Look at some tests on YouTube. You go ahead and practice. Okay. Yes, all right, bye.